evening. And of course, as is our tradition now, before we get to tonight's headlines, here's a message from yet another one of our island's frontline heroes. Uh, today my name is Senior Airman Jerome Solovar from the Air National Guard 254th Metal War Squadron. We're in this together. Stay home, stay safe, and wash your hands. Now, of course, it is a pretty big undertaking to thank each and every one of these heroes, but nothing compares to what they are doing. So thank each and every one of you for keeping us safe, and we'll continue to pay tribute to you all. Thank you, and see Masi. All right, everybody, now for the very latest with containing COVID on Guam. Off today, everybody, I'm Sabrina Salas Matsunani with your latest on containing COVID. According to the Joint Information Center, 229 tests were conducted on Friday. Zero returned positive. These are samples from hospitals, quarantine, clinics, and community testing conducted in Agate and Mangilao. To date, there are 146 confirmed cases of COVID-19 on Guam, five deaths, and 131 recoveries. After wrapping up community drive through and walk-in testing in northern, central, and southern Guam, it was back to work for the Department of Public Health staff and nurses as they continue their battle to contain the spread of COVID-19 on Guam. Today, they began swamping residents in areas such as Hemlani Apartments in Harmon. Public Health Director Linda Npingo Donorsi telling KUAM they plan to hold community testing at Hemlani Apartments in Timuning, Maritza, and Maiti as well. Eventually, they will conduct testing at Gumatrankiladot in Tumon and St. Dominic's in Barragata Heights. Plans to open a homeless shelter today at the Paseo Stadium have been scrapped, according to Adeloupe. Based on recent information garnered from similar projects in other jurisdictions, the site for the Safe Haven project was determined not to be conducive to limiting the spread of COVID-19. It has been over one month since the governor announced she was working on a shelter for the island's homeless population. A few days ago, restrooms were being fixed at the Paseo Stadium and the baseball field was being prepped. FEMA spokesperson Frank Mansell told KUAM that GovGuam had requested the federal agency to provide tents for the homeless shelter at Paseo. He says, however, a determination was made that it is not an allowable expense. Adelup says site alternatives are being immediately considered in order to safely accommodate the vulnerable population as quickly as possible. Governor Lulian Guerrero's former chief of staff, Tony Pabalta, isn't the only high-ranking official who was and is allowed to stay at the Pacific Star in Tumon. KUAM has confirmed that Guam Energy Office Director Rebecca Respicio, Guam Housing Corporation President Alice Tyron, and Guam International Airport Authority Deputy Executive Manager John Kinata are also staying at the Tumon Hotel. According to documents obtained by KUAM, the Pacific Star is being used as a quarantine isolation facility by the local government. Governor Leon Guerrero's director of policy, Carlo Branch, says Respicio and Tyron staff the quarantine site 24-7. Quote, this is because regular hotel staff are not permitted to have contact with quarantined individuals. At present, that means being the only overnight staff for 140 individuals. If a person needs food, blankets, or has a problem in their room at night, it's Rebecca and Alice they call for help. It's also important to note that while arrivals are much smaller, inbound flights to Guam still occur requiring quarantine. As for GIAA Deputy Executive Manager Kanata, Carlo responded, I cannot comment on matters related to HIPAA. Babalta resigned as chief of staff on Friday following a whirlwind of controversy related to his one-night stay at the hotel. It's not clear how many GovGuam employees are being allowed to stay at the Packstar. Earlier in the week, Carrera told KUAM that two to three staffers work the site at any given point during the 24-7 period and are provided a room to rest. Starting Monday, GRMC will be implementing changes to its visiting policy. GRMC will still observe social distancing and all visitors must wear a mask at all times while in the hospital. Everyone entering must submit to a screening by security for temperature and possible COVID-19 symptoms. Anyone who refuses to be screened or wear a mask will not be allowed to enter. Some of the changes include that inpatients will be allowed to have one visitor per day for a period of one hour. Visiting hours will be daily from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. However, to comply with social distancing requirements. Specific visiting times have been set. Overnight visitors will continue to not be allowed unless a specific order is given by the patient's doctor in consultation with nursing staff. And no visitors allowed in the emergency department except for children who may be accompanied by one parent or legal guardian. 
Thousands watched online and on KUAM TV. Archbishop Michael Burns holding a special mass to reconsecrate our island to the Blessed Virgin Mary. During the mass, the Archbishop made the announcement about outdoor services. In this coming week, we will have the opportunity uh, in the parishes for which it is uh, possible to have mass congregate in a parking lot and to receive communion uh, from their cars. So I just want to make this uh, known at this point um, in just that there's another ray of light uh, for us here on this island. And we're doing this in cooperation with the Department of uh, Public Health and uh, just want to acknowledge that as a church we have a strong uh, uh, desire to be partners with our government, uh, recognizing that we have a, a, an extraordinary responsibility to see that uh, our efforts in the church don't become uh, an instance of uh, widening the, the scope of infection here on the island. Following the Mass, the historic statue of Santa Maria Cumlin traveled through island villages and passed all of Guam's Catholic churches. It marked the first time the image was taken down from its spot at the cathedral for other than the annual celebration of the Feast of the Immaculate Conception every December 8th. Faithful all across the island stood outside their homes and churches in prayer as the statue of Santa Maria Cumlin drove by. For more on containing COVID, make sure to check out KUAM.com as well as any of our social media platforms. Again, Guam, we're all in this together. Please, we urge you to practice social distancing, wear a mask, and stay home. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matanani. Also tonight, the state surgeon sale has plans in place to create an organic stockpile for PPE supplies in order to maintain and increase medical capacity. Sergeant Fernando Estevez provided an update during this week's press briefing. Our Adriana Cotero gives you a recap. In the event of a second wave or surge, Sergeant Fernando Estevez with the state surgeon cell says part of the way forward is to one, ensure Guam meets current medical capacity, while two, increasing the medical capacity, and three, having a plan of action to execute and expand this medical capacity. In order to do that, we factor in uh, multiple aspects, personnel, equipment, and supplies. Guam has actually done a very good job with regard to its PPE maintenance. Moving forward, we're, we're as part of this process to maintain and increase capacity, we're going to be having an organic stockpile here on the island, similar to what the national stockpile has uh, with regard to PP and other equipment. According to Sergeant Estevez, the CDC guidelines for conserving personal protective equipment recommends an extended use policy to prevent a scarcity. And by following this, Guam has kept from having a dire shortage. There is, however, a shortage of non-medical face masks at the Guam Memorial Hospital. There are contingency plans in place um, and our ordering is ongoing and we do expect supplies to be coming in um, because they've been allocated by the different distributors and manufacturers. Estevez was unable to provide information on the cost of medical materials purchased by GovGuam to date, as he says he does not have eyes on the individual clinics and agencies such as Public Health, GMH, and GRMC's procurement orders. But he does have eyes on what's currently in stock and supply arrivals. In terms of, of PPE that's been ordered, I can't, I can't give a general estimate at this time. Um, we've, we've placed orders and at least started the process for around 75,095 masks uh, that were vetted um, from different uh, manufacturers and different supply companies from off island, um, as well as uh, gloves, I mean, sorry, gowns have been a particular issue. Uh, currently still vetting more sources for ventilators because those are still a hot item. In overseeing the development of the organic stockpile, Esteva says they will be using a mathematical formula for supply economy. Particularly the EOQ formula, uh, with making adjustments to that formula to account for uh, variability in the lead time. And so we're going to be taking this approach to determine what that stockpile will be, um, both reasonable in supply uh, to account for, for manufacturing issues, as well as making sure that it's economic, cool, economic for, the, uh, for the government of Guam. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. 
Adriana, thanks so much. Now, since the onset of the coronavirus outbreak, there's been a parallel uptick in break-ins to Guam's public schools. Last week, GW High in Mingilao and MU Luhan Elementary School had back-to-back -back incidents reported. GPD spokesman Sergeant Paul Tapao talked to the department's plans to increase patrol visibility. Burglaries, vandalism, and a report of arson. The Guam Police Department responds to numerous complaints from Guam public schools being broken into. You know, sometimes it's hit and miss. You know, either we're, we're, we're there and we're able to apprehend and, and you know, um, prevent a, a school breaking from happening because of the presence. Or, you know, we may, you know, uh, have not seen the opportunity to deploy officers in these certain areas. But, you know, nonetheless, these are things in which we're going to take, take into consideration of right. the time. Over the last week, Weddingale Elementary School, MU Luhan Elementary School, and George Washington High School classrooms were damaged, property stolen. And now GPD has active cases to investigate. According to GPD spokesperson Sergeant Paul Tapao, in addition to an arson complaint, GW High School had reports of damages costing over $20,000. One of the classes that was broken into was a marketing class. And, you know, the equipment and instruments that they have there to teach the kids about, you know, running a retail store, retail outlet, it's really damaged, you know, from... Uh, no apparent reason. Sergeant Tapao says in identifying suspects, they are looking at the entire community. Now that law enforcement is breaking away from patrolling road closures, there will be high police visibility in the precincts. We're going to see, uh, you know, a number of increase in the patrol officers, and you know, this is a good sign as as, as we break away, and uh, you know, the, the governor and the administration is as as is, is providing that that assistance by by uh, you know deploying some of the uh, regulatory. Uh, uh, law enforcement agencies such as Guam Customs, Port Authority of Guam Conservation Officers to assist us with, with dealing with the COVID site. The Guam Crime Stoppers also seeks the community's help with these cases. If you have any information, submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All tip information remains anonymous and a $1,000 cash reward is paid if it leads to an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Elsewhere, Administrator of the Guam Memorial Hospital, Lillian Posadas, confirmed to KUAM News that she did deny repayment to a hospital nurse who stayed at a hotel rather than go home and possibly infect her family. Posadas says this was because she lacked any documentation. And I'm open for reconsideration if the nurse herself provides the supporting documents that are authenticated from the hotel that she stayed. Um, you know, I need to see that. I don't know what she is because it wasn't in the letter. And I, you know, again, it was only her who requested. There are several nurses who had longer hours of exposure to COVID patients or PUI. They worked eight hours, 12 hours, but I did not receive any other requests for reimbursement. <laughs> The nurse reportedly sought repayment for staying at a hotel after the first COVID infection surfaced, but before an executive order authorizing reimbursement was issued. Frontliners can choose to stay at a hotel rather than go home every day and risk infecting their families. Please stay tuned, everybody. Daily Maintenance with Custom Fitness is coming up. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Today, I'm Bernie Valencia with Matson. Our local Matson team understands that these are very trying times for everyone. Matson's top priority, like yours, is to keep our families safe and healthy and ensure you have what you need. We'd like to give you peace of mind that Matson's service continues unscheduled and uninterrupted. Matson is committed to our weekly service from the United States West Coast to Honolulu into Guam and Saipan. We are working with the Port Authority of Guam and providing the capacity and services our customers need so they can continue to meet your needs. Matson will take all appropriate measures to ensure continuity of service into Guam and Saipan. When we work together to take care of our family and neighbors, we will emerge from this as a stronger island community. This public service announcement was brought to you by the Port Authority of Guam, KOAM Communications, and Matson. During these uncertain times, it's important to remember that we are in this together. The Cowboys Insurance Team has continued to service the needs of our customers. As in the past 80 years, you can count on us to be here when you need us most, when it comes to your health and the health of your family. 
Let's continue making the right choices by staying home, staying safe, and staying healthy. We are all in this together, and together we will rise again. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more. Mix and match data paths. Take your data further. Welcome back, everybody. Ryan and Paul Claris from Custom Fitness have a series of helpful inside tips that can get you in shape while we're all doing the right thing and staying home. Here's Daily Maintenance. Hi, this is Ryan Claris from Custom Fitness, licensed physical therapist. Thank you for joining us again for our Daily Maintenance segment number six. Here we go. So we've been talking about joints this whole time. All right, so Coach Paul, this is Coach Paul from Custom Fitness, head coach. So can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, so what is 26 bones, 33 joints, 19 muscles, 10 tendons, and 10 ligaments? I think my foot, Coach. Your foot, yes, your ankle and foot joint is composed of that. If you notice, that's a whole lot of things going on, right? We've been trying to run more, walk more, squat more, do all these things since we've been home with these home exercise pro uh, programs that all of a sudden your feet start to hurt. So we're gonna show you today how to relieve non-specific foot pain non or non-traumatic issues. Sounds good, but if you already have something that is already diagnosed within the foot, this can help as well. All right, three steps that we need to do. Decrease tension, increase movement or mobility, and then we're gonna increase that muscle stiffness. All right, so coach, what do we got today? We're gonna, to, we're gonna first off with, let's have a decrease tension. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do some self massage. So what we wanna be able to do is we're gonna split our foot into three parts here. The outside, the middle, and the, the inside right here. All we're gonna do is hand over hand, we're gonna go ahead and cut, uh, cut the, the foot, and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and just like a slight, slight massage. Remember, if you were to go get a massage, you don't want one of these, okay? You wanna go ahead and just kinda of dig in there. As we go, you can go all the way from the heel, right, on the outside of the foot, and then you're gonna go there. So we'll, we'll, you'll feel a little bit of uh, maybe some pain, some tenderness, and then all you're gonna do is, hey, by the way, that feels a little bit better. Let's go ahead and work towards that middle. Yeah. So we're just kinda of go ahead and working towards that middle. And then, guess what? That top hand just comes with the top, and we can just kinda of get that at all. Coach, how are we doing with that? Just and remember, so what we really wanna focus on, especially towards the, the, the inside of the part, is right underneath that big toe where a lot of issues can occur. So right in there, remember, we're just kind of gripping that, kind of moving it around. And as we do that, the last part, what we wanna do is we're gonna slide that foot down, coach. Go ahead and slide that down. We're gonna expose this tendon junction area right there. Again, we wanna go ahead and start from the bottom of that heel or that, that calcaneus region. Go ahead, we're gonna grip that Achilles tendon, and we're just gonna go forward and backwards with it right in this position. Remember, squeeze nice and tight. You're gonna feel a lot of looseness, especially in this area. Again, remember, we're just trying to uh, decrease tension. Guess what? We can use a lacrosse ball, you can use a stick, PVC pipe, you can use whatever you want, golf ball, tennis ball. Now, guess what? I, I can't reach this. All we have to do is gonna go ahead and sit down. Same basic techniques, gonna go ahead and start from the outside coach. Remember, start from that heel. Gonna go nice and slow. You're gonna feel all these like little knots on the bottom of your feet and then they're gonna be relieved. Especially for those of you who sit at a desk or have been sitting on a couch, this is a bit awesome. You don't have to do anything, right? Same thing you could use for any type of rollers that you have, a tennis ball. I like a lacrosse ball because it's just nice and soft, but it still has that like a little bit of a hardness uh, to it. All right, next thing we gotta do is we gotta actively increase, decrease that tension, we gotta increase that movement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out. Very, very simple, we're gonna work on some big toe mobility. A lot of us have bunions, Right there, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna challenge yourself. Hey coach, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say splay your feet. And so all that means is that from this position, we're gonna take your big toes, try to splay them as far out as you can. If you're laying on your couch, try this right now. I guarantee you, left and right will not be the same. I guarantee you, so all we're gonna do is, and then what we wanna do is try to wiggle those, wiggle those toes for me. In this standing position, what we're gonna try to do is go ahead and try to get that big toe down, right in here. And then you're gonna go ahead and try to lift the other toes. Again, you notice differences. The goal, goal for this is again, try to be symmetrical as possible. Then we'll go ahead and switch that. 
Toes will be given, other toes will go down, and the big toe comes up. That coach is not happening. And it's not happening. Again, these are some things, especially if you're running, you need, if you're running, you need that big toe mobility. All right, now we're going to those traditional uh, other stretches. So what we're going to do is we've gone through those. All right, so what we're going to do is work on some of that ankle movement within the ankle, right? So we need a lot of dorsiflexion with ability for my big toe to come to my shin. So what we're going to do is get into the kneeling position right in here, and we're just going to go, go ahead and hold that position. Remember, the knee heel can go over the big toe, come back coach. The knee can go over the middle of the foot, come back coach. And the knee again can go on the opposite. Variation is key in this. We need, everyone's going to be a little bit tight in different positions, so we need movement. So from this position, guess what coach is going to go ahead and stand? And we're now going to go ahead and try to get that big toe. So toe comes back, and we're going to be in a standing position. He's going to go ahead and drop this knee right in here. And we're just going to get that and keep on coming, coach. So what we're going to do is focus on getting this heel. Come and come on in. Where we're literally stretching that big toe. Coach, you feel that? Okay, remember, holding these for about 60 seconds, you're going to feel, automatically feel that going and stand, coach. And we're going to go ahead and get that. Now look, we're going to get, we'll go ahead and get these big muscles right in here. Both feet are forward, and what we're going to do is we're trying to focus on leaving the seal on the ground. We're going to go ahead and try to stretch this big muscle right in here. And again, we want to go ahead and adjust that foot towards straight ahead. Squeezing through that, you're going to feel this nice stretch along here. Maybe sometimes all the way up into the hamstring. And then all we're going to do is keeping the angle right there. We're going to go ahead and try to put a slight bend in that knee now, coach. Keep the angle down. Come on, keep the angle down. You notice it's hard. He has to screw his foot up just a little bit. And you're now going to go ahead, instead of feeling it right in here, you're going to go ahead and feel it towards this junction area right here. Lots and lots of things going on right there. How are we doing with that? Good. Good? Oh, All right. Nice. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, Coach, you can kneel for me. We're going to kneel. We're going to go ahead and put two of the heels together right in here. We're going to go from the side. Feet are going to be flat on the floor. Boom. And we're just going to go ahead and sit. Very traditional stretch. We're going to get the, now the front part of that shin portion. Of, if you maybe have some shin splints, this may help as well. Now the last segment that we're going to do is we're just going to, the last portion is the stability action. So first off, we're going to go ahead and stand on both feet, coach. Easiest things that we do are just some calf braces. From this position, remember, variation for us is key. We want to be able to drive off that big toe first, and then we're just going to go ahead and come on up, coach. And remember, we're trying to stay on that big toe, right, and go ahead and come on up. 15 to 20 repetitions, three times a day. This is going to definitely help. And then we said variation. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and point the feet out. Point the feet out, coach. There we go. And we're just going to go in and come up again. Try to drive off that toe. Let's go ahead and show that front angle there, coach. Right there. And all we do is we switch feet. Right? So we went forward first. And now the last one is going to be going to come on in and going to come on up. Cool. So just the same way that we stretch those the big muscles behind the back of the legs, we can do this standing up, but also with the bent knee. So bent knee and go ahead and come on up. Now then we're going to get towards that bottom of the Achilles area. If you're having some issues with the Achilles towards the heel, again, this can help. 15 to 20 repetitions, three to four sets daily for the next six weeks. I guarantee you, majority of this pain will kind of will try, uh, try to um, decrease. All right, thank you again for joining us for our daily maintenance seg uh, segment number six, working on some non-traumatic foot pain. Uh, for those of you who have uh, started running, maybe walking, doing more squatting, or just being active, uh, your feet can start to act up. Thank you, and my name is Ryan Claris from Custom Fitness. This is Paul Claris, head coach from Custom, from Custom Fitness. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. King's Restaurants are still cooking up your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner plates and have them available for carryout and delivery. Call them into winning at 647-5464 or in Denido at 637-5464 and order for carryout. For delivery, please download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get King's delivered to your door. Be safe and stay healthy until we see each other again at King's. 
It's what we've all been waiting to hear. The governor this week announced her COVID-19 Road to Recovery plan. It didn't go perfectly though. Let's take a look at this week's trend spotting report. Half a day, everyone. I'm Adriana Cotero bringing you the latest in trend spotting. The governor announced Chalen Fada Hanemlu on Thursday, the road to recovery, and May 9th is a target date she's eyeing to start slowly reopening the island. The plan works in phases, like the way we handle our typhoons. Right now, we are in pandemic condition of readiness one, or PCOR one. It has the strictest measures imposed to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Triggers must be met before Guam can move into the next phase. That May 9th target date will only happen if Guam continues a consistent decline in virus cases. We're able to handle cases at the hospital and we're able to test and contact trace effectively. And we're heading there with mass testing in its beginning stages, with consistent few positive cases reported daily, sometimes even zero. Also at the moment, there are no COVID-19 patients admitted to Guam hospitals. PCOR 2 means we'll have moderate restrictions still imposed and some non-essential businesses and non-government organizations can reopen with limits. That includes retail stores, salons, barbershops, and more. But you'll still have to practice social distancing and wear a mask. Dr. Felix Cabrera, the island's COVID-19 Surgeon General, says it could be a while before we can reach PCOR 3, much less PCOR 4. He said, quote, The reality is that it may take months for this to happen. We may continue to live in a PCOR 2 or PCOR 3 environment until this trigger can be achieved, unquote. The recovery plan was unveiled during the governor's press briefing on Thursday, which did not go off without a hitch. Reporters were told by the governor's communications director, Janela Carrera, that only questions on the plan would be entertained. But island residents and business owners are hungry for answers. They're asking, where's the money for our suffering residents to questions on transparency? So reporters full of COVID-19 related questions, including myself, tried to address the governor anyway. In the middle of my question on spending and the recent scandal reported on Governor Chief of Staff Tony Babauta. Carrera cut me off, muting my mic. Here's what you all had to say on that action. Jean Flores says, why answer the questions after the press conference? The purpose of the press conference is to answer questions the media asks for the public. Joe Cruz says, interesting how the questions are limited to the recovery plan only. Things that make you wonder, did they just cut off the media? Merle Venus says, seriously, you're denying the media to ask the questions that the people of Guam want to know? The daily press briefing is typically the only shot reporters have to seek answers from the governor and her team together with just two questions each. Following GovGuam canceled the daily press briefing on Friday afternoon, hours later, the governor's chief of staff, Tony Babalta, resigned. As a news organization, we continue to seek those answers you need, and we will push for transparency in the government, especially in this pandemic emergency. KUAM has joined more than 140 media organizations across the country in signing the National Freedom of Information coalition's call for government transparency. And as we're heading to a possible lift in some restrictions, the Archdiocese of Agania is hoping it could also get some leeway to start operating early. Now public health and the church have been cooperating since the start of the shutdown, but the church was denied a request to begin holding outdoor mass and offering sacraments. The issue is in the hands of the U.S. attorney, who will be forwarding it to the Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division. Archbishop Michael Burns said, quote, There are some things we feel are essential. For instance, the sacrament of confession. We feel like we can do that by maintaining social distance very appropriately by doing car window confessions with a priest wearing a mask, unquote. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Trendspotting, and thank you for staying with KUAM on all our social media platforms. I'm Adriana Cotero for Trendspotting. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more. Mix and match data pass. 
take your data further. And now here's your birthday shout outs. Hey everybody, when's the best time for a birthday? Well, any day of course, but when you have it on a weekend, that's especially cool. So happy birthday, born on May 2nd, to Kimberly Cruz. Also happy birthday to Kristen Sablon. Pretty girl, happy birthday, may you have a wonderful, blessed day. Jim Ray just turned 46 into my handsome and supportive husband from your loving wife, Lynn, and all of us, your teammates. John David Afison Roberto, happy birthday number 21 from your Roberto's family. Joe Kataro celebrates a birthday today, and happy birthday blessings, Dad and Papa. Love your family. And Lucy Simmons Sablon. Happy blessed birthday, Lucy. Wishing you the best from the whole family. Enjoy your special day and stay safe. Love, peace, and hugs from Todos. Liza Mira, happy birthday to you, as well as Calvin Titanfong, also born on May 2nd. Lido also blows out the candles today, as does Tiana May again. And born on May the 3rd, Kenneth J. Reyes. Hope each and every one of you had the very best birthday ever. Just make sure to go to kwm.com to register for the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. That's it for the show, everybody. Please stay safe and be healthy. We'll see you next time.